for the pass-throughs, and I appreciate Senator McCaskill looking closely at this bill, and as she said, she wants to know whether she should vote for it or not. I appreciate her attitude. And uh, I do think it's a whole lot simpler than what the House came up with because the 17.4 percent deduction is simpler than coming up with a formula that every company would probably disagree with, and then you'd have this prove out. So uh, that's one reason the National Federation of Independent Businesses today endorsed this bill. And NFIB is big in my state, it's big in your state and all of our states, and, and they do think this is simpler. It would be a good tax cut, particularly for small businesses. Uh, with regard to what Senator Bennett said earlier about the distribution of the tax cuts in this bill, um, I've already asked uh, Mr. Bartold about this, as have others, and he says there's a tax cut at every, every income group. Um, in other words, if you look at between $20,000 and $40,000, there's a, there's a tax cut. If between forty dollars and sixty, dollars there's a tax cut and so on. Um, one of the distribution tables that I've got in front of me here, uh, Mr. Bartold, is your uh, JCX 53-17, distribution effects of the chairman's mark. I know this isn't uh, necessarily accurate now because now we have taken some of the tax, which is what it is, it's in the inter inter uh, Internal Revenue Code, from the individual mandate and provided more middle class tax relief. So these distribution tables are even more uh, skewed toward the middle class now than this one is. But let me ask you the questions here, just looking at that table. Uh, the comment was made that the wealthy are going to pay less. Do the wealthier pay as a percentage of their tax more or less under this table? I'm looking at federal taxes under the proposal and federal taxes under present law. And let's say for those of a million dollars or up. Uh, w which columns are you looking at again? I'm looking Senator at uh, federal taxes under present law. Okay. Federal taxes under the proposal, okay. and what the percent of taxation the is percent. for those okay. of what a million these uh, or up. what these columns report are the share of total federal tax paid by individual by tax filing units in that income group. Yes. And uh, I think the point that uh, you're highlighting is that. Uh, generally speaking, the, the uh, highest uh, income group, which we report is a million and over, uh, is paying approximately the same or more of total federal taxes under the proposal. Right. Your, your chart here, and again, I would encourage everybody to go on jct.gov and look at it yourself. Uh, look at all these charts. I'm giving you another commercial advertisement here because so much of this debate is not about what's actually factual. Um, and it says here uh, this group is paying 19.3 now. Under this proposal, they'll pay 19.4, so they pay a higher amount. How about 30,000 to 40,000? Are they going to pay more or less? Oh, I'm sorry. 30,000. Uh, we're 40, looking uh, again in calendar year uh, 2019 uh, on this, and the 30,000 to 40,000 uh, under present law. Uh, pay 1.5 percent of total fa uh, federal taxes under the proposal. We estimate that they would pay 1.4 percent of total federal taxes. Okay. And how about uh, the next group or the next? How about 50 to 75,000, more or less? 50 to 75, 8.2 to 8.1. So they're paying less. Proposal. So this is before the additional tax cuts are put in here for the middle class. But already we see that, in fact, what was said earlier and what's been said, unfortunately, uh, consistently here is just not accurate with your, your own charts. Right here. Mr. Chairman. So, no, let me, let no, me finish, because you, you guys have all taken two or two and a half minutes more than your I didn't. I'm trying to keep I it. did not. I did well, not, Senator Portman. you're taking Portman. my time now. I did not, Senator Portman. Well, and, you're taking and my time now. So what, what? I just want to, I just want to be clear for the record that the witness responding Chairman, to my question. Chairman, can we have order? Yeah, I, let, me, let, me, let me finish, gonna, finish, we're finish my discussion have order here. order, and, and I'll, I'll let you make your comment afterwards. To my friend from Colorado, and he is my friend, I'm just pointing out the obvious, which is under this tax proposal, those at the top end are going to pay a bigger burden of the taxation. The middle class will pay less. That's obvious, and it's in the charts. It's been there for a while. With the new proposal, it'll be even more so. With regard to that's who current, pays the that's individual. That's current law. I mean, they, yeah. they're, they're actually going to pay less. Under they're going to pay less. Under, yeah. uh, under the individual mandate, because we've talked a lot about that, let me just tell you the statistics are that 84 percent of Ohioans who are currently subject to the individual mandate, which is a tax based on the fact that it's in the code and based on what the Supreme Court has said, and they certainly feel like it is, it's a penalty, 84 percent of those people make less than 50,000 bucks a year. So they're going to be relieved of that, and then they're going to be told you're going to get more tax cuts under this bill because this money goes into the tax relief primarily for, primarily, 
for middle class taxpayers. Uh, and again, jct.gov, everybody should go on and look at it themselves. Ms. Acuna, I'd like to correct the record on some of the international arguments made today. First, colleagues on this side of the aisle have talked about using Bermuda as a way to erode the U.S. tax base. That's happening now. The problem is our current tax code is encouraging companies to go overseas and investment to go overseas. We've studied this. We've had analysis of it. It's been bipartisan to say, let's stop this. Let's lower the rate. Let's go to an international system that's fair, the territorial system that's never been a partisan issue until now. Uh, can you explain to me how we're going to put a stop to foreign companies using related party payments, interest royalties, stuff like that, Senator Bermuda, to, to erode the U.S. tax base? How have we improved on that in this bill compared to current law? In this bill, um, there's a proposal called the Base Erosion Anti-Abuse Tax that um, calculates a modified taxable base, and it adds back those foreign related party payments that are typically used to strip the U.S. base. It multiplies it by a reduced tax rate of 10 percent, and it compares your actual corporate le tax liability to the, the tentative tax liability, and you pay the residual. Will this help to keep income from leasing, leaving the United States as leaving now? In other words, will this help to stop what's going on now in terms of people sending money away from the United States to get, take advantage of low-tax jurisdictions? I think with respect to payments that are made to related parties abroad, it would have a, deter, a deterrent effect. Good. That's what, that's what we want. Um, people have talked about China. Uh, this is going to make jobs go to China. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Barthold, maybe, or, or Ms. Acuna. What is the tax rate, the corporate tax rate in China? I believe it's currently 25 percent, but I'd have to check. I will I ask I one of my colleagues to check and we'll get back to you. 25 percent. Our rate now is 35 percent. So, yeah, there is some incentive to do that. We have the highest rate in the industrialized world. What will the tax rate be under our proposal? The chairman's mark provides for a 20 percent corporate rate, sir. So this is, I mean, look, I, I, I get it that we've got a broken tax code and that we have to fix it, um, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get these jobs and investment back here in this country, both foreign investment and U.S. companies not taking their jobs overseas and instead of adding jobs here, and that's what these proposals are intended to do. Again, they've been bipartisan in the past. Hope they can be going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, your